Bismillah here Rahman near Rahim. Jihad is not terrorism. Ghulam Ahmad Pawe. Translated by Shahid Chowdhury. Glossary. Allah. Arabic, Quranic reference to the one God who is the Lord God, the creator and sustainer of the entire universe and everything that is in it. Allah is not an exclusive name for a tribal deity of Muslims as some Christians, Jews and other non-Muslims erroneously believe. It is wrong to consider Allah as a name for God as God has no name, only attributes. Or Din. A term with no exact English equivalent, a way of life, and in the Islamic context, a social, political system based on Quranic values. Deen is generally translated incorrectly in English as religion. Amen. According to the Holy Quran, the conviction that results from full mental acceptance and intellectual satisfaction. This kind of conviction gives one a feeling of, am, peace, inner contentment. In addition, a moment is one who accepts the truth and acts in such a way that it ensures his own peace and helps him to safeguard the security of the rest of mankind. Am, Amen and Momen have a common root. Momen. One who accepts the truth in such a way that it ensures his own peace and helps to safeguard the peace and security of the rest of mankind. Al Momen is one of the attributes of Allah Himself. See also Amen. Muhammad. Peace be upon him. The final messenger of Allah. PBUH. When Muslims take the name of a messenger in writing, they usually add the salutation. PBUH. Peace be upon him. This salutation is not used in the Quran. It should be implicitly understood that, as mentioned in Surah as Safat. 37. 181. We do convey peace upon all the messengers of Allah, and praise be to Allah, sustainer of the universe. Quran. Holy scripture of Muslims revealed by God Almighty to Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Dot. Its literal meaning is collection, recitation. The Holy Quran is the last of the divine books. Ramat. An attribute of Allah by which he provides means of protection and sources of nourishment at every level, from the physical nature, e.g. crops, to the psychological, for benefit of human self-development, e.g. revelation, wahi, shariat, Islamic law, way of life. Shariat is synonymous with deen. Note. With reference to Quranic verses cited in this book, the surah number is written first followed by the verse number. For example, 4, 6, means surah number 4, verse 6. Introduction. Jihad, what the Quran states. Khalid Mahmud Said. The shocking events of September 11, 2001 in the United States of America rocked the entire West as never before and changed the world forever. It has been the topic of the day ever since, dominating media reporting all over the globe. The USA, Britain and their allies formed a global coalition and bombed heavily the suspected strongholds of Osama bin Laden in Kandahar, Kabul and other parts of Afghanistan. Osama has never been found, dead or alive, but the coalition's occupation of Afghanistan continues. The radical government of Iran is widely seen in the West as the sustaining force behind the power of militant organizations such as Hamas in the Middle East. The suicide bombing missions and terrorist activities in central London and the Madrid city center have made an intense situation even more so. The subsequent invasion of Iraq with its never-ending carnage, has added fuel to the fire of distrust and animosity between the Christian West and the Muslim East. We are living the Crusades all over again. A vast number of people in the West equate such terrorist activities with Islam and consider most young Muslim men as potential terrorists and a threat to society while an ever-increasing number of Muslims especially the young, are vigorously reviving in their hearts, and becoming more vocal about the traditional Islamic sentiment of loathing towards non-Muslims, especially the Judeo-Christian world. 
This is the burning issue, figuratively as well as literally, of the day and warrants our attention. It is important because the West, as well as a growing number of Muslims, believe activities such as suicide bombing and terrorist missions are not only sanctioned but actually encouraged by Islamic teachings. The term jihad is taken to mean armed combat against non-Muslims. Let us look at this issue intelligently, coolly and level-headedly from the standpoint of Islam. Islam and the Quran. But, what is Islam? The question has been asked thousands of times and appears to be ridiculously simple. In reality, however, it is not as easy to answer as many might like to think. As has been realistically observed by some, one might distinguish three Islams. First, the Islam contained in the Quran. Second, the Islam as interpreted and developed by theologians through the prophetic tradition. Hadith. It includes what is known as the Sharia as well as fi, the Islamic jurisprudence, law, for legal purposes, and third, the Islam reflected in the deeds and achievements of Muslims through history as well as the present day. However, this may be too fine a distinction. What Muslims have done and achieved throughout their history, and still do, has largely been on the basis of the second Islam in the above list. At least, they have tried, and still do, to find a justification for most of their actions in traditional Islam the conventional view of Islam based upon an amalgam of hadith. Records of the sayings and deeds of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Tariq. Historical records like Kitab al-Maghazi. Annals of raids and battles. Sira ter Rasul. Biographical records of the Prophet. Tafsir, the Quranic exegesis, as well as fiqh, treatises on jurisprudence. Practically, that means that there is the scripture, the Quran, and there is the interpretation of it, the extra-Quranic literature. At times, the two sources are at odds with one another and present different, sometimes, contradictory, views about a given subject. The result has been scores of brands and definitions of Islam solidifying those different views over more than 15 centuries into as many sects of Islam. The logic commonly accepted and adhered to by the dominant majority of Muslims is as follows. 1. The Quran, the divine message was revealed to Muhammad. Peace be upon him. 2. He had the duty to transmit, as well as explain and interpret, the message. 3. He fulfilled his prophetic duty to the full by honestly transmitting God's word, the Quran, to the people of Hejaz, whose duty in turn it was to spread the message to the rest of the world. Also, he explained and interpreted the divine message by his deeds as well as utterances. 4. Muhammad's explanations and interpretations were recorded by very able compilers, under the title Hadith, after extremely careful and hard work that is almost flawless. 5. No one can ever understand God's message better than the Messenger himself, who was directly guided by God. Therefore, in a way, Hadith is God's own explanation and interpretation of his word. It follows logically that if one finds a discrepancy between the Quran and Hadith, the problem lies with the reader's understanding, and 1. The Hadith view overrides the Quranic view. Because the reader's concept of the Quranic view is a misunderstanding in the first place and therefore faulty. The problem is compounded by another term often used by Muslims, the Sunnah. The prophetic model. Short for Sunnah Ta Rasul Allah. The way of the Messenger of Allah. Or Sunnah Tan Nabi. The way of the Prophet. It is almost invariably used in conjunction with the term Quran. Muslims assert that Islamic laws must be based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. But, there we come up against a problem. In response to the question, what, where is the Quran? One can point out to a particular volume in a pile of books and say, here is a volume in the Arabic language, consisting of 114 chapters, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. 
Peace be upon him. In 6th, 7th century Arabia. No one is likely to dispute that statement. But, the answer to the question, what, where is the sunnah? is not that easy to provide. The response is very likely to be, well, the sunnah is contained in the various authentic compilations of hadith, reliable records of Tariq and Syra, and of course, the Quran. So, the sunnah has to be compiled from all these sources. There have been scores of such compilations in various languages throughout the history of literature on Islam. The diversity of these sources has meant the appearance of differing versions of the prophetic model simply because of the inconsistencies of the source material. The result has been a very conspicuous absence of one authentic compilation of the Sunnah unanimously agreed upon by Muslims. A more unfortunate consequence has been the division of the Ummah, the Muslim nation, into literally scores of sects believing in versions of Islamic philosophy and conduct based upon the prophetic model vastly different from, at times, opposite to, each other. Confusion and Contradiction an impartial and critical examination of the extra-Quranic literature of Islam, such as Hadith, reveals differences not only between various reports on the same subject but also between Hadith and the Quran. Here are a couple of examples. 1. Muta. Temporary marriage. Is forbidden according to some reports while according to others it is permissible. The Quran, however, does not sanction it. The Quranic marriage is intended for life in a loving and caring environment for both partners. 30. 21. 2. According to Hadith, the punishment for fornication is 100 lashes for the single, unmarried, and stoning to death for the married. The Quran makes no such distinction and prescribes 100 lashes regardless. The woman and the man guilty of fornication, flog each of them with a hundred stripes. 24. 2. In my view, therefore, the way forward for Muslims, if they desire to remove all the confusion that exists about what Islam teaches, may be the following. According to the Quran, the canon is the Book of God, which was given to Muhammad. Peace be upon him. His duty was to teach it to the people of his time in a manner which would make them understand it comprehensively so that they could pass it on to the rest of humanity for all times. This included their moral as well academic training, interpretation of the message, and implementing it under the circumstances of the time. The collection of his actions and sayings is a valuable historical record which should serve as a precedent. It should be used to take guidance from as we do in taking lessons from history. They should help us to know how Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the people of his time viewed the fundamental principles of the Quran. The details in Hadith were never meant to become etched in stone for all eternity. Of all Muslim literature, only the Quran lays a serious claim to divinity, universality and eternity and as such, in the Muslim context, it should be the ultimate authority in matters of faith. Also because only the Quran, and no other genre of Islamic literature, has been, and still is, to countless human beings the final, unadulterated, direct word of the Creator. Thus, it is imperative that we look at the question of terrorism and jihad from the point of view of the Quran, the Muslim holy book. Terrorism, or jihad. The Quranic perspective. As it has been so aptly remarked, more than half of the issues in a discussion are automatically addressed if the terminology involved is agreed upon beforehand. Let us, therefore, determine what we mean by terrorism. Linguistically, terror is described as 1. Intense, overwhelming fear. 2. Something, as a terrifying object or event that instills intense fear. 3. Ability to instill intense fear. 4. Violence promoted by a group to achieve or maintain supremacy. Also. Informal. One that is annoying or difficult to manage, especially a child. Nuisance. 
This may be expressed in Arabic by the word kaf. Lexically, the word kaf springs from the three-letter root ka, waao, fa, which basically means to apprehend an imminent danger. In the Quran it is mentioned in Chapter 4, and Nisa. The women. If a woman fears transgression from her. Quarreling. Husband. 4. 128. In Chapter 16, Anal. The bees. It states. They fear their sustainer's supremacy and do as they are told. 16. 50. Therefore, fear of Allah means to follow the right. Allah's path for fear of the ill effects which will result by abandoning it. As we can see, Kauf is just like the apprehension one has if one is to touch a naked flame. That is why al kafa is the protective overall of beekeepers. Incidentally, Kauf has also been used in the Quran in the applied meanings of armed combat. 33. 19. It also means to reduce, or decrease. 16. 47. Fear, therefore, is a negative feeling which can be avoided by following God's way as laid down in the Quran. 2. 38. 6. 48, etc. It can be deduced, therefore, that fear. Terror. Is not desirable and is to be avoided and averted. It just cannot be right for anyone to live in terror. Thus, the tactics used by any single person, or a group, or a state to try to achieve or maintain supremacy by instilling intense fear is wrong. Secondly, one of the fundamentals of the Quranic teachings is that one cannot adopt negative. Wrong. Means to achieve an aim, even if it is positive. Right. In other words, the end does not justify the means. The Quran states. 76. 3. It also declares. The right path leads man to the right end, the wrong to the wrong. 4. 88. 4. 137. 4. 143. 25. 9. Therefore, according to the Quran, instilling fear just cannot be accepted as legitimate, even if it is for the noble and exalted purpose of upholding Islam. God's Law. Thirdly, the terror tactics aimed at people who are not directly involved in, or responsible for, the conflict can never be justified from the Quranic viewpoint. It states very clearly. No one shall bear someone else's burden. 6. 165. So, punishing innocent people for the misdeeds of men in power is totally un-Quranic. Furthermore, such unjustifiable and misplaced killings are seen by the Quran as gigantic acts of murder. A single unjustified killing is tantamount to annihilating the entire human race. 5. 32. 6. 152. 17. 33. By the same token. Bombing the helpless and innocent civilians in the poverty-stricken villages and towns of Afghanistan. Or the peaceful multitudes in Iraqi cities, for the crimes of one person and his group cannot be justified from a Quranic perspective. Fourthly, the Quran has laid down rules of conduct in times of both war and peace. Generally, one must be fair to everyone at all times. Be just and fair even to your enemies. 5. 8. Elsewhere, it states. If you fear violation of an agreement by a nation, throw it away on the basis of equality. 8. 58. Again, it reminds Muslims. In confrontation, remember a lot more, and adhere more strongly to, the law of God, so that you come out benefited. 8. 58. Clearly, then, Muslims must conduct themselves fairly, honestly and openly, even in times of war. So, how can killing of innocent people, taking the hostages, etc. in times of peace be justified from an Islamic viewpoint? Jihad. What is jihad according to the Quran? Linguistically, the term springs from the three-letter root jhd with the basic meanings of hardship, toiling, and completing a task. 
according to Taj al-Yuruz, the famous Arabic lexicon by Mohibuddin al-Hanafi. D. 1791. Published in Egypt, circa 1890. Juhud means expanse and energy. But it may be used in the sense of toil, as in the Quranic verse 9. 79. Jihad means an arid grassless piece of land. Ajadat lak al ard means the land became visible, exposed for you. Thus, the very well known Islamic term for exercising judgment in matters of religious matters, ijatahad, literally means to strive and exert fully. In the Quran, we find the term mujahideen used as contrasting antonym for qadeen. Those who sit, not move. Therefore, mujahideen means those who strive. Therefore, jihad is a comprehensive term for hard work, perseverance, striving, in the way of God. In the course of this striving, one may face extreme hardship which may sometimes culminate in armed combat. But only for defense. For armed combat, the Quranic term is kital. Killing. Fi sablil Allah. In the way of God. So, jihad in the meaning of armed combat is a misnomer, it should be kital. And jihad in the sense of terrorism has no place whatsoever in the Quranic perspective. These are some of the points which Ghulam Ahmad Parwe has very ably tackled in his article. Parwe. 1903-1985. Founded the Tolu-e Islam. Dawn of Islam. Movement in 1938 in British India and launched its mouthpiece Urdu journal, the monthly Tolu e Islam, which continues to be published from Lahore, Pakistan. The movement stands for a rational interpretation of the Quran, which it considers as the final authority on all matters Islamic, superseding any extra Quranic literature. It is hoped that this introduction and the following article will remove most if not all, confusion, misunderstanding and apprehension surrounding the very crucial current subject of terrorism and jihad, putting these concepts in their true Quranic light. Khalid Saeed Peterborough, UK